Hi, everybody. Welcome to the AOCS Student E-Poster Pitch Competition for the Analytical Division. We look forward to hearing the student presentations, hearing feedback and questions from the judges, and seeing the participation from our live audience. Um, I want to introduce the judges for today's uh, the Analytical Division's competition. They are Lisa Clement, Francesca Giprida, and Hefei Zhao. Um, so here's just an overview of what's going to happen today. Each of the two competition finalists will present for five minutes. After each student presents, a seven minute question and feedback session will take place. Please post any questions, comments, or congratulatory notes in the chat area. After all the presentations have ended, we'll pause the live stream for a few minutes to allow for final judge deliberations. During this time, the viewing audience will be able to, view, uh, to also vote for their favorite poster pitch. Lastly, we will announce the first and second place winners of the AOCS Student E-Poster Pitch Competition for the Analytical Division. We want to thank the students and thank all the volunteer judges and the audience for attending, listening, and supporting this competition. So let's get started. The first speaker is Stephen Mascrez. He is from a PhD, sorry, a PhD student from the University of Liege in Belgium. And he has actually two posters in the competition today. The first poster that he's presenting, the title is Enhanced HS SPME Extraction Kinetics by Vacuum Assisted Headspace and Multi Cumulative Trapping SPME and the combination of them for olive oil volatile profiling. Good luck, Stephen. Everybody, first, thanks Jill for this kind introduction and also to the OCS Organic Committee to let me the possibility to show you my work today. So here, the goal of my, of my work was to work on HSSPME. SPME is a wide, widely used technique to sample the volatiles of food. And here, the, the goal of the, this work was to improve the sensitivity of analysis in an acceptable lifetime analysis. So for this, we had two approaches, use of vacuum and the multi-cumulative trapping. So for this, I'm going to explain you the both approaches. So first, the vacuum. So here, goal was to reduce, to remove, uh, to reduce the pressure inside the vial. And uh, so the effect that can occur on the, on the sample. So if we can consider the, the sample at the interface with two film, gas and liquid film, to use a reduced pressure will reduce the resistance of the gas phase and it will have a direct impact on the semi volatile compound. So the, the diffusion of the compound, this compound will be facilitated and so to increase the volatilization of the semi volatile compound. So on the right, <clears throat> you can see a graph that represents the kinetics of one extraction. So using atmospheric pressure that we call here regular HSS PME and with reduced pressure the, with vacuum. So you can see that at the end of the analysis, the equilibrium stage will be the same for both, but it's faster using this HSPME for the pre-equilibrium stage, which is more used for analysis. So here, so just to show you the effect of vacuum, you can see two chromatograms at same extraction time and temperature, but using vac, so reduced pressure on the green chromatogram and the red, it's a regular one. And you can see that on the left part, so for the most volatile, there is no significant impact of vacuum, but on more interestingly, on the right part, so for the semi-volatile, there is much more extraction of the compounds. And there is also another way to show you the impact of vacuum. So we designed a central component design with a time 
uh, extraction time and temperature. And we see that we, with vacuum, we would succeed to reach an optimum instead of HSSPM. And so the, the faculty to reach a uh, faster equilibrium, post pre equilibrium, we can reach a higher sensitivity and throughput for the same extraction time and at milder temperature. So then the second approach was to use multi cumulative extraction. So it means that for one vial here, we can use, or we can proceed as many extraction as we want. The only limitation is here on the second part, so the trapping, the capacity of the trap. So after each desorption, the compounds are focused on the cold trap, remain at zero degree or even below, and we can proceed as many extraction as we want. And then at the end, the cold trap warming up fastly to inject everything in one single analysis in the GC. So in our previous work, we also work on the on the fact to have a saturated or non-saturated head space. So saturated means that we can put a large amount of compound uh, of sample, sorry, and with non-saturated that it's lower. And we show that uh, at lower sample volume, so at non-saturated head space, we can extract much information for the semi-volatile because when we increase the volume, uh, we gain in a sensitivity, but more for the more volatile compound. So at the opposite, we increase more the extraction for the semi-volatiles, and also to use a reduced time, as we can show you here, we avoid the displacement effect that the, generally the most volatile compound takes place of the semi-volatiles. And here, to sh just show you that depending on the number of extraction, is here three, we can succeed a good clusterization of the three different classes of olive oil, extra virgin, virgin, and olive oil. And so the goal of this work was to merge both techniques, so use the, the impact of vacuum to have a higher signal at uh, uh, faster extraction, and the accumulation to have a higher sensitivity and to increase the signal. So as you can see here, for the same condition of extraction, temperature, and the same number of extraction, the, for the semi-volatile compounds so on the right part, the compounds are much more extracted with the vacuum. This is also you can see with the bar plot, regardless of the condition, it's always higher with the vacuum that confirms the theory. And just as little proof concept as shown before, we use different classes of olive oil, extra virgin, virgin and lampant, try to, with this condition, with vacuum and multi-cumulative, see if we could, we could um, uh, do the, um, the, um, the clusterization, sorry. So thanks for your attention. Mr. Mescres, uh, your presentation was really wonderful. Um, I believe now the judges, it's time for your feedback and questions. For those of you in the audience, please add your questions and comments to the live stream chat and I will uh, read them out loud if we have time. So we have seven minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephen, for uh, for your presentation. I have a question about uh, uh, the type of fiber you used. Have you have you observed uh, a selectivity uh, versus the volatile or semi-volatiles? So here we use so the classical uh, triple phases, so DVB car PDMS. And so here the problem is it's with this kind of fiber. It's the it's an adsorption. Effect and so we, we have to play with the displacement effect. And so to reduce the time, we avoid this. And so we uh, we done more important with extraction for the semi volatile compound that more are more affected by the by the displacement effect. 
Okay, thank you. And uh, I was curious to know if uh, you have tried to adulterate some extra virgin olive oil with uh, virgin olive oil and try to see if your methodology can spot this adulteration. Uh, actually, no, but this is a good idea. So this I take into account to see uh, if we adulterate and at which percentage of adulteration the method can be sensitive. But so here now the here we just to try to see if it was able. We just have a, a huge panel of samples, so extra virgin, virgin, and lampant. But yes, this is a good idea also yet to uh, to adulterate to see the, if the method is enough powerful to detect this. Can I go on with question, or maybe some of the other judge uh, want to ask question as well? Hi, Steve. Hello. This is uh, Hefei Zhao from UC Davis. Uh, I have a question about the efficiency of your master two-dimension GC, mm -hmm. multiple GC. So uh, how about the efficiency or time taking for you run uh, one single sample? I'll, I'll clone the text. Excuse? No, I didn't get the question, sorry. Uh, you didn't, you... I mean, the efficiency, I mean, the time. So the time? You, for, yeah, the time. For you run one sample, how long okay. will it take? Oh, yeah. Okay, but so uh, for the multi-cumulative, so for the extraction part, it's not much that longer than a classical one. So for example, compare three times 10 minutes compared to 30 minutes. During the uh, end treatment, sorry? 30 minutes. Yeah, it's uh, roughly 30 minutes because we have time. They just, we just have to, to add the time of desorption for each extraction. So for example, if we do a, a method of three times 10 minutes, we had to add a bit more time to uh, re-extract and to, uh, to desorb. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. I may have another question. When you uh, re-extract several times, uh, uh, right, the the sample. Have you noticed if the uh, lifespan of the fiber is shorter? Uh, so uh, no, uh, no. The, the lifetime, uh, the shelf life of the fiber is not affected. It's just because yeah, we deserve more. But I think here yeah, for um, one fiber, we can use almost as much as we use uh, more in normal way. So. We don't shorten that much uh, actually the, the fiber, yes. And have you analyzed uh, already other matrices different than oil? Uh, so uh, I worked with a master student last year that did the same kind of uh, work, but with uh, brewed coffee mm -hmm. and different with another kind of SPME. And uh, we have similar results, yes. So that we improve, but just with the, uh, Multi-cumulative, not with uh, the vacuum. Vacuum is just, I just tested now because during my thesis, the two big projects are the use of vacuum and the multi-cumulative. And now I wanted to, to merge both to see if we can even have more information than just one separately from the other. And is this a easy setup to have in a laboratory? Uh, so, so for the vacuum, it, uh, the only thing required, let me say it's, uh, a modified cap homemade to, to keep the pressure stable if when we remove this, but then just use a, a classical vacuum pump with a syringe to remove the air inside. And then for the multi-cumulative, it's thanks to the to the system that uh, with the system of cold trap that is it's not uh, present everywhere, it's uh, something from uh, from Marx. So it's just a, a lab. Okay, thank you. Hi, Stephen. Um, thanks for sharing this work and great job on the pitch. Um, what was the biggest surprise you encountered during the course of your study? Ooh. Um, it said that the, the goal was in the two approaches, we improve uh, the extraction of more the semi volatiles that's more compound of interest, at least for olive oil, because they are used for the authentic, authenticity purpose fingerprinting. And so the, I didn't expect that to merge both techniques that can give a even higher, so a good synergic, let me say, uh, effect between both techniques, yes.
All right, I'm not seeing any audience questions yet. Uh, we do have, well, maybe one minute. So if you have a quick question, please put it in the uh, chat box. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. Well, let me, let me see. Okay, no, I'm not seeing any questions. So let's go ahead and move on to um, our second presentation. Um, if you're just joining or you have just joined, our uh, second finalist is the same as our first finalist, and it's um, Mr. Stephen Mestres, and he is a PhD student at the University of Liege in Belgium. Let me Thanks, Nuni, for this kind introduction, and also to let me the possibility to show another part of, uh, of my work, of our works. So here I'm going to show you a method that we developed for the FEMS analysis. So first, why we decided to, to, to develop, optimize this method, this analysis? It's because it can be a long method in terms of analysis with GC, but also preparation. So here the goal was to to have a simple, fast method using in usable in routine, but with a higher sensitive or selective uh, properties. So here, first to compare why we choose, sorry, the GC time GC instead of GC, that uh, for a single GC analysis for the FEMS, a single long run is required to uh, succeed to separate all the compounds without collusion or even try to separate, as you can see, the, the isomers of the, the same fatty, uh, saturate, unsaturated fatty acids. But the, one of the main, for the main advantage of GC times GC is that for a shorter single run, we can separate all the compounds, as you can see, but also the isomers uh, unsaturated fatty acid, which is our interest, especially to detect the trans fatty acid. And to show also that the robustness of the system to be used in a routine, I can show you here with the injection of standard, same standard in, during the same day or different days, that there is no deviation of the first and second dimension in time, but also we reach a, uh, we have, don't have any deviation for the LOQ and LOD. So that is important too for the quantification. <clears throat> so now more about the method. So as reference, we use the OCS method for the lipid extraction using chloroform and methanol, and then the methylation use the BF3. So the condition we use as a extraction and derivation in the one pot, that's also important using microwave. As a reagent, we use HCl in methanol, and uh, as solvent of extraction, the cyclohexane, which is a bit greener, let me say, than hexane. <clears throat> the method of reference that we use for this one, taken in 30 minutes. So we applied the microwave this time. We compare the error percentage profile of fatty acids compared to the one obtained on the reference on the same sample here, milk. And to always with this idea to reduce and save time, we reduce the method to 15 minutes and also compare what we obtain. And as you can see, there is no significant difference in the overall profile. <coughs> and so to, to show you just a global idea of the, the robustness of the method, we try to apply so that the final method to different kinds of matrices, more or less complex, more or less fat or a bit aqueous, as you can see on fish oil, Philadelphia, some pizza, lasagna. 
every, a bit everything. We grab all the solid samples, and then we compare all the profile to what we obtain always to the same reference. And as you can see, as the one I show you, so with the fish oil or the Philadelphia, we didn't obtain significant difference between all the profile. And so here, also the last information that we use as reference to see if our method is effective, efficient, is that we use the information given on the nutritional label, so on the food packaging, it's always given the information of the amount for the content of saturated fatty acid in the food. And so, considering that we don't know how this value is really obtained, to have a first idea, what we did is just to sum all the percentage of saturated area, uh, fatty acid, saturated fatty acid, and compare to the reference value. So we did the same for the houses reference method, also for the micro that method that we developed. And as you can see, there is no newly significant difference that can be another clue that to say that the method is really efficient. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for your for your question for your question. All right, thank you so much for your presentation. It is now time for feedback from the judges and questions. And if the audience has any questions, please place them in the chat and I will read them out loud as well. Thank you, Stephen, for the presentation. Uh, Lisa, do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead, Francesca. Okay. Thank you, Stephen, for the presentation. I'm, I may have um, uh, missed it. Uh, uh, what, what was the length of the column that you used? Uh, the, the first one on the first dimension? Yeah. 20 meters. And the second one? Five meters. Okay. And uh, uh, maybe I, I didn't catch it. So you could uh, separate all the trans isomers in me, so for example. Yes, we succeed to have uh, at least enough separation to distinguish the cis from the trans. Yes. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, a last question. Um, I saw that you analyze also fish with your mm -hmm. microwave sample prep. You didn't lose any polyunsaturated fatty acid during the, the sample prep. No, but as always for all the process, whatever the regardless. The, Matrices, we use, we apply the, the reference method for the extraction of lipid and use, and we had the same results, so there was no loss on, uh, on that part. Okay, and then uh, as, uh, as about applicability, is this uh, the, the two-dimension GC, uh, would, you would, you would uh, say that it's a routine analysis, kind of routine analysis that can be easily implemented in, in any lab, or do you but need a specific... Uh, so, uh, sorry, my bad. Um, yes, it's usable in routine, except that we have the method, and as I show you, that there is no deviation in time in terms of retention time for, on the first and second one. So, for the identification of the fatty acid, there is no problem on that part. So, considering that the method now it's uh, is, is working, I think there is no problem to use a directly in routine this one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I guess maybe I missed it. Was the microwave um, sample prep interfaced with your 2DG or was GC, is that offline? Uh, no, no, it's offline. So first we did on the microwave, the extraction. So we had two phases and we just pick up the cyclohexane interface and directly, and then we had to inject in the, in the GC, yes. Okay. And maybe a follow-up to Francesca's question. Um, so do you, you didn't anticipate any restrictions on 
implementing this on a broader scale? Uh, I don't, I'm sorry, in, I didn't in more, um, implementation of this methodology um, in, in like a routine lab, you don't anticipate any restrictions there? As far as I know, no, but at first already so the more the sample prep part, it's quite easy because it just requires uh, one reagent and one solvent. And then we can, in the microwave, we can proceed to 12 analysis in a row. And then we just have to, to inject in GC. So yeah, I think it's just usable yeah, in routine, but more than that, I can't tell you. Okay, great. We do have a few uh, audience questions. Uh, I'd like yeah. to give last judge an opportunity to ask any questions. Okay. Yeah, hi, Steve. Uh, this is Hoffi. Uh, I have a question that uh, how many replicates you need for your each GC sample run, running? Uh, for the optimization, we did replicates for the reference okay. and our method, and then uh, also triplicates at least yeah, to see the rate of replicability for each sample, and there was no real de deviation. Okay, yeah, I heard that. If I'm not wrong, I heard that you mentioned uh, there is no significant difference between two different samples, which is mm -hmm. good. Mm -mm -mm. But uh, but when we met normally, I mean not not always. Normally, when we mention significant difference. It should have uh, the uh, statistic analysis like RSD or Turkey test to show mm -hmm. the p value. How will you do that? Uh, we just we did a key test yeah, to see if there was some significant difference or not. Okay, you did do the key test. Have you marked yeah. them? Marker the the significance on the poster. Ah, on the poster, um, no, I, no, on the poster, it's not present, no, no, no. Uh, in the poster, you didn't No, I forgot to put it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. more focused on the different, the possibility to apply to numerous of sample, but yeah, I don't, don't put this information through. Okay, okay, yeah, so I just uh, I recommend, this is just to let you know and recommend, mm -hmm. if mark those significant difference, it will be better for okay. sure. information for delivery. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Well, thanks. thanks for your feedback, yes. Thank you, thanks. Okay, um, we did have a couple of audience questions. Uh, I'll ask one of them um, and see if we have time to move on to the next. So the first question is what kind of matrices would not be suited for the, um, the microwave is extraction method. Which kind of matrix we, we can't use, sorry. Uh, yeah. Are there any matrices that would not be suitable for using the uh, microwave assisted extraction method? Ah. Uh, as far as I know, I wouldn't say, I would say no, because we try to have different kind of matrices, but three really different, we didn't, we choose a bit more vegetables, more meat or already prepared food to see if they are to try to change a bit the method, but after I can't say if there is something that would not work. We try to have a really large panel, but that's it. Okay. Um, I think the last question will have to wait until the end maybe, or we'll have to send it to you and have you uh, maybe respond at a later time. Sure, no problem. Thank you very much, you, great too. job. And let's move on to our last finalist. So our third and final finalist is Ms. Ada Kaya. 
Uh, Ada Kaya is a PhD student and graduate research assistant in food at the Food Science Institute of Animal Science and Industry Department of Kansas State University. She's working on a PhD project, characterization and development of sorghum DDGS for value added food applications, which is funded by Global Food Systems Seed Grant Program and supported by the US Department of Agriculture. And her, the title of her presentation today is Response Surface Methodology Optimization of the Use of Acetyl Triacylglycerol for Improving the Structure of Whey Protein Foams. So Ada, good luck. Thank you for introduction. Um, hi everyone, this is Eda from Kansas State University. And today I will be introducing my poster for you, uh, which is named as Response Surface Methodology Optimization of the Use of Acetyl Triacylglycerol for Improving the Structure of Whey Protein Foams. Um, first, I would like to start with the outline. Uh, today I will be talking about some background information and continue with the research problem and results and conclude with the relevance. So what is acetyl TAG that you can see in my poster and what is its importance in my poster? As you can see on the left side of the figure, Camelina sativa, Arabidopsis, soybean, these are uh, host plants that can be transformed and modify the oil composition in their transgenic lines. Uh, but today I will be focusing on the Camelina sativa, which is going to be transgenically engineered using the enzyme Inanimus alatus diacylglycerol acetyl transferase to form essentially acetate position acetyl TAG structures. And you can see these steps on the bottom side of the figure as well. So Camelina sativa has a very rare structure. Uh, after the modification with an acetate group at SNG position. And this modification brings acetyl TAG to have some value added functional physicochemical properties in different food applications. For example, they can be used as a food stabilizer, emulsifier, or even plasticizer. So what is the relation with the foams? As you already know, foams are two phase systems where the air cells are dispersed in the continuous aqueous phases. And we know these foams as mirroring ice cream, whipped cream, or marshmallows commercially. And their stability and capacity are really important. So acetyl TAG can be normally used as a foam stabilizer in these structures. So if you know, uh, foam structure has actually main, three main steps in the formation. In the first step, the protein moves to the air-water interface, and they interact with the hydrophobic and hydrophilic groups uh, with polar water or protein solution and non-polar air bubbles. Then we add this acetyl TAG, they can interact with the air bubbles reduce the surface tension of protein and help to stabilize our full model structure. So what was the research problem for the poster? As you know, marshmallow, whipped cream, or other confectionery products containing foams have also high amounts of sugar because sugar is really important to stabilize foam and for functional properties of foams as well. But if you look at from the health concern, it might be required to reduce the use of sugar. So here the idea was coming, which is the use of acetyl TAG. We can use it as a foam stabilizer to keep the same capacity and stability of the foams by trying to reduce the use of sugar. So the objective was using a Box Wilson design and response surface methodology and acetyl TAG as a foam stabilizer, try to reduce the use of sugar and analyzes as a novel foam stabilizer in the structures. So the hypothesis, acetyl TAG can serve as a potential foam stabilizer and we can understand the effect of each factor using RSM approach. So here you can see the materials and the experimental steps that I use in my poster as well. So after foam preparation step, analysis of acetyl TAG and protein solution, as well as foam were conducted, and each factor effect on each responses were analyzed. 
So here also you can see the methods in detail, which experiment were conducted for each step. So acetyl CAG fatty acid characterization and foam analysis were performed. Design of experiment were conducted using SAS 9.4 version, and during that SAS also backward elimination were performed to eliminate the insignificant variables. And you can see the Box Wilson experimental run order on the left side. We use whey protein isolate, sucrose, and acetyl CAG uh, as an ingredient. So when we come to the results, the first thing was the composition characterization of the fatty acids of acetyl TAGs, and we use two different transgenic lines here. And more importantly, foam overrun was an important parameter for us. We figured it out that when we use acetyl TAG and VPI as higher concentrations, overload values of foam were also enhanced. We obtain 1,100% overrun, as you can see on this three-dimensional surface, when we increase the acetyl TAG concentration up to 0.5%. Drainage or stability was also an important parameter for us. We figured out the 0.25 to 0.5% acetyl TAG help to improve the stability by lowering the drainage, which is serum, between the air bubbles, the skin layer, and the minimum foam drainage was obtained as 21.5 when we increased the acetyl TAG between these ranges. So these results actually shows us that acetyl TAG really might be an effective potential for us to use in commercial foam applications. So interfacial characterization was also performed, and it has been seen that foams having different concentrations have different dynamic interfacial properties, and these experiments were conducted using optical tensiometer pulsating module. And acetyl TAG can be used between 0.25 to 0.75%, and these concentrations enhance the elastic regions at the air-water interface and keep the expanding air bubbles in the foam network. So acetyl TAG can be used in up to 0.75% concentration to get the similar foam structure. Okay, you have about well, so the over time, so um, okay. if you can wrap it up. Thanks. Okay. So acetyl TAG can be used as a potential foam stabilizer in reduced sugar foam formulations for our studies. So these were the references for my study, and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, now it is time for the judges to give some uh, feedback and ask questions. And the audience may also ask questions by placing them in the chat. And if we have time, I will read them aloud. I also wanna remind you that after the question and answer session, uh, then it will be time to place a vote. Um, so I just wanted to remind you of that. Thank you, Ada, for the presentation. Uh, I have a question about the label. How would you label this acetyl uh, triacylglycerol? Um, the transgenic studies were actually conducted by the biochemistry department in Kansas State. So we obtained these transgenically engineered oils um, ready to use in our foam formulations. So I know the labeling was actually performed in the genetic department and they produced this transgenically engineered form there. Okay. And uh, in terms of stability, uh, I mean uh, uh, quality, uh, uh, like oxidation, 
How mm -hmm. does it behave uh, compared to a normal uh, oil? It was it was so surprising for me because I was expecting a uh, similar behavior that a normal lipid or oil that we use. Uh, but its oxidative stability is really high and uh, we don't see any rancidity for a very long time through this research. And still we are using acetyl THG actually for other studies as well. So it's uh, oxidative stability is really high and rancidity is really lower than uh, the normal actually oils that we and use. And how does it taste? I mean, is it? It's, uh, it's like plant taste. It's like okay. exactly like Camerina sativa that we can, you know, see in the field. It's uh, smell is like this, taste is like that too. Kind of a plant-based um, oil, but it's not resembling the oil that we know, like, uh, olive oil or any other kind of oil. It's like plant-based something. It resembles okay. like this. Uh, can you just give uh, more details about the LCMS analysis that you, you run to characterize this, uh, this oil? Uh, the uh, T-layer chromatography was actually used to characterize two different transgenic lines of acetyl TAG. Was, one of them was high oleic and the other one was the wild type lines. And to see really how they are going to behave in terms of the fatty acid composition. Um, so the chromatographic analysis was done uh, whether if we can see different uh, behaviors when we use two different lines for the further studies. Thank you for your question, by the way. Hi, Ada. Uh, great job on the pitch. Um, Thank you. What was, the what was the stability from like a physical or cosmetic perspective? If we use acetyl TAG for like uh, any cosmetically uh, product commercially, if it is possible, I am believing that the stability would gonna be longer uh, than the other oils because this change in the, uh, actually the medium chain and the addition of this acetate group enhanced the stability. So which is actually the one of the good parts to use the acetyl TAG. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, Dr. Zhao, did you have any questions before we uh, end the questioning period? Uh, no, I don't have more questions, but uh, I like this presentation very much. Thank and, you so uh, much. Yeah, just a, a personal uh, recommendation that if you have additional data, independent data to authenticate your mm -hmm. response surface model, that will send your uh, work to a higher mm -hmm. level for publication or etc. Yeah. Okay. That's, Thank that's, you so much. That is my for the feedback. recommendation. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we have five minutes for the judges uh, to deliberate. And I believe now we will also launch the audience poll. The audience vote occurs only on the AOCS uh, annual meeting websites and instructions on how to vote are, should be posted in the chat. Your audience vote is important and it does impact the placement of our top finishers. So we encourage you to vote for your favorite pitch. Scores are being tallied and we'll be back in a few minutes to announce the winner of the AOCS student e-poster pitch competition for the analytical division. Good luck everyone.
Okay, everybody. Well, the judges scores and the audience scores have been tallied and it's time to announce the winners. Um, the first place winner will receive a $200 cash prize, recognition certificate, and a complimentary 2023 AOCS student membership. Our second place winner receives a $100 cash prize and a recognition certificate. So the runner up is Mr. Steven Mescrez for his poster, his first poster, um, and that title is Enhanced Headspace Schemey Extraction Kinetics by Vacuum Assisted Headspace and Multi-Cumulative Trapping SPME and the combination of them for olive oil volatile pro profiling. Our first place winner is uh, Ms. Ada Kaya for her poster, Response Surface Methodology Optimization of the Use of Acetyl Triacylglycerols for Improving the structure of whey protein foams. So congratulations to our runner up and our winner. Uh, everybody clap. <laughs> um, thank you very much to the judges and thank you to all of you that participated. Uh, and also thank the AOCS Foundation who funded the competition and for everybody who voted for their favorite pitch. So congratulations, and I believe this ends our session. So thank you, everyone.